Rogal Dorn, also known as the Vigilant, Praetorian of Terra, and the Unyielding One, was the Primarch of the Imperial Fist Space Marine Legion, revered as one of the Imperium of Man's greatest heroes. His Jin Sons referred to him by the war name of Defiance. If the Primarchs were seen as the Emperor's nature refracted through a prism, as some Imperial scholars suggested during the Great Crusade, then Dorn was the embodiment of the Emperor's unwavering disciple. His loyalty and sense of duty were as intrinsic to him as blood and bread. Welcome back, Lord Lovers. It's Lindrak here, and today we are diving deep into the rich and tragic tale of Rogal Dorn, the stoic Primarch of the Imperial Feasts. From his battles during the Horus Heresy to his ultimate fate in the grim darkness of the far future, Dorn's story is one of loyalty, sacrifice, and unyielding determination. So grab your bolters and fortify your minds, because we are about to uncover the legendary legacy of the Emperor's Praetorian. Let's get into it. The Primarchs, transcended beings crafted from humanity, but far beyond it, each brought a unique character to their religions. In the case of the Imperial Fist, the discovery of their Primarch only strengthened their already formidable nature. Rogal Dorn was found on the ice world of Inuit, a planet of death and cold. This harsh environment shaped its inhabitants into strong, grim, and dedicated survivors, traits that resonated deeply with Dorn's own nature. Raised by the ice caste, Dorn grew to rule Inuit's stellar empire. His adoptive grandfather, the clan patriarch, taught him the ways of war and leadership. Even after learning he was not of blood relation, Dorn cherished his grandfather's memory, keeping a four-edged robe that long belonged to him. In 835 Milion 30, 40 years after his grandfather's death, Dorn was reunited with the Emperor during the Great Crusade. Dorn met the Emperor aboard the Phalanx, an enormous starship from the Age of Technology that he had discovered. The Emperor welcomed him as a last son, granting him command of the 7th Space Marine Legion created from Dorn's genetic template. Fiercely loyal, Dorn never sought favor from his father. He embodied truth and could not lie, a quality that earned him a statue on McCrage alongside Gulliman. Dorn commanded the Imperial Feast with military genius and devotion, earning the respect of his brother Primarchs even as tensions arose, particularly with Perturabo of the Iron Warriors. The Imperial Feast, known for their defensive mastery, acted as the Emperor's strategic reserve during the Great Crusade. They excelled in urban warfare and siege tactics rapidly redeploying across battlefields abroad the phalanx. As the Emperor returned to Terra to build his capital, Dorn and the Imperial Feast were set as his Praetorians, charged with constructing the Imperial Palace, a task that did not go unnoticed by his brothers, further straining relations with Perturabo. In their methods of war, the Imperial Feast mirrored the relentless and disciplined nature of Dorn. They pushed forward from one war zone to the next fortifying what they conquered without lingering to rule. Dorn sold recruits, not vessels, ensuring that the Imperial Feast remained a purely military force, focused on the survival of the Imperium rather than the governance of worlds. The tension and eventually enmity between Rogal Dorn and Perturabo, despite their similarities, is one of the most compelling narratives in the history of the Horus Heresy. Both were masters of siege warfare and commanded their legions with unyielding resolve. However, their rivalry seems to stem from their differing outlooks on warfare and their contrasting personalities. Dorn, ever the idealist, pursued perfection in strategy and execution, often with a sense of moral duty that underpinned his decisions. He valued life even in war and sought to minimize unnecessary losses. Perturabo, on the other hand, was deeply pragmatic, often willing to sacrifice large numbers of his forces to achieve victory. His brutal efficiency and lack of recognition for his sacrifices fostered a deep resentment, especially toward Dorn, who, despite their similar skills, was celebrated for his achievements and closeness to the Emperor. The Ulanor Crusade and the events following it only deepened these rifts, as Horus was elevated to the rank of War Master, securing the loyalty and support of his brothers became critical. While many Primarchs accepted Horus's new role, 
others including Perturabo, harbored bitterness, feeling overlooked and undervalued. Dorn, however, accepted Horus's appointment with his usual stoic resolve, focusing on his duties rather than politics. Their rivalry reached its peak during the Horus heresy, particularly in the siege of Terra, where Perturabo and his iron warriors would eventually lay siege to the very fortifications Dorn had built around the Imperial Palace. The clash of their legions was as much a personal vendetta as it was a military confrontation, symbolizing the tragic division among the Primarchs that led to the near destruction of the Imperium. The events of the Horus Heresy placed Rogal Dorn and his Imperial Fist in the unenviable position of defending the heart of the Imperium, Terra itself. As the Praetorian of Terra, Dorn was tasked with fortifying the Sol system turning it into an impregnable fortress in anticipation of Horus's inevitable assault. However, before his legion could fully rally to Terra's defense, the heresy overtook them. The discovery of the dead guard Freigait Einstein was a pivotal moment. Its survivors, led by Captain Nathaniel Garrow, brought the grim news of Horus's betrayal. Initially, Dorn refused to believe that his brother, Horus, could have turned traitor. This belief nearly led to Garrow's death at Dorn's hands, yet the evidence presented by Garrow and others including Lacton, Cruz and Euphrates Killer eventually convinced Dorn of the terrible truth. As a result, he dispatched the bulk of his legion to the Isvan system to confront the traitors while he returned to Terra with a contingent of veterans to inform the Emperor of the unfolding disaster. Back on Terra, Dorn's task of fortification was complicated by the insidious actions of the Alpha Legion. Led by Alpharius, the 20 Legion sought to undermine the defenses of the Sol system and humiliate Dorn personally. The Alpha Legion's infiltration of Terra's Imperial Palace, particularly the destruction of the statues in the investiary, was a calculated psychological blow aimed at Dorn and the Imperial Feast. The fact that they left the statues of Alpharius and Dorn intact was a deliberate challenge, a message that Alpha Legion had penetrated even the most secure areas of the Emperor's domain. Despite this, Dorn's resolve did not waver. The Alpha Legion sabotage within the Sol system culminated in the Battle of Pluto, a critical confrontation that saw Alpharius personally leading his forces in an assault on the outermost defenses. The Alpha Legion's tactics involving sleeper agents, divisionary attacks and stealthy fleet movements were designed to sow chaos and weaken the loyalist defenses before Horus's main assault. The battle saw Sigismund, the first captain of the Imperial Feast, and his vastly outnumbered forces heroically defended Pluto's moons against overwhelming odds. The Alpha Legion's primary target was Hydra, a fortress moon that served as a key astropathic hub for the loyalists. The capture of Hydra and other moons combined with the destruction wrought by fire ships and the uprising instigated by Alpha Legion operatives created a dire situation for the defenders. Yet even in the face of these overwhelming odds, the Imperial Fist remained steadfast, embodying the unyielding spirit of their Primarch. Before we continue, a quick reminder lore lovers, if you are enjoying this deep dive into Warhammer 40k lore, don't forget to hit that like button, it really helps the channel and lets me know you are loving these videos. Now let's get back to the battlefields of the 31st millennium. The battle for Terra and the fate of the Imperial hung in the balance as Rogal Dorn, Primarch of the Imperial Feast, prepared to defend the Emperor's throne against the onslaught of the traitor legion. Before the final siege of Terra, the conflict reached a pivotal moment during the Battle of Pluto. As the battle raged on and all seemed lost, Dorn himself arrived with a massive Imperial Feast fleet, boosted by reinforcements from the Armada Imperialis. Using gravity wells to quickly traverse the system, the Imperial Feasts reasserted control over the battlefield. Rogal Dorn laid a counter assault on Hydra, where he and his Haskars teleported into the heart of the enemy's stronghold to confront Alpharius directly. The clash between the two Primarchs was a fierce and epic duel. Archmagus, though gravely injured, attempted to intervene when Alpharius appeared ready to strike a fatal blow against Dorn. However, Dorn had anticipated the move and used the opportunity to deliver a little counterattack. With his chainsword Storm Steed, Dorn severed Alpharius' hands and, after a brutal struggle, impaled his brother with the pale spear. 
he finished the duel by delivering a final devastating blow to Alpharius' skull. The death of Alpharius shattered the resolve of the Alpha Legion. Their fleet withdrew from Pluto, and the loyalists regained control of the system. Meanwhile, Alpharius' twin, Omegon, sensed his brother's death and took on Alpharius' identity, assuming full control of the Legion as the sole Primarch. With Pluto secure, Dorn turned his attention back to Terra, where he oversaw the fortification of the Imperial Palace. The defenses were reinforced with massive artillery bastions and steel plating, transforming the palace into a fortress. Though Dorn regretted marrying the beauty of the palace, he knew these measures were necessary to withstand the impending siege by the traitor legions. In addition to fortifying Terra, Dorn led a raid on Mars to secure critical supplies from the Loyalist Mechanicum. These supplies, including the vital Mark VI power armor, proved essential in defense of the palace during the siege of Terra. During the final battle, Dorn and his elite forces teleported abroad Horus's flagship, but due to the Chaos powers warping the teleportation, they landed far from the Warmaster. Fighting their way across the ship, they arrived too late to join the final confrontation between Horus, the Emperor and Sanguinius. Dorn was the first to find their bodies after the duel, Horus slain by the Emperor and the Emperor fatally wounded. It was Dorn who carried the Emperor's shattered form back to the Golden Throne, where the Master of Mankind would be entombed for the next 10 millennia. Neither truly alive nor dead, in the aftermath, Dorn would hear the Emperor's final commands on how to rebuild the Imperium, a responsibility that would weigh heavily on the Stoic Primarch in the grim future to come. After the interment of the Emperor in the Golden Throne, Rogal Dorn was deeply stricken with grief and guilt, believing that the Emperor's near death was his failure. In an attempt to atone, Dorn led the Imperial Feast on a crusade of penitence across the Imperium, purging traitors wherever they could be found. This relentless campaign was fueled by Dorn's overwhelming sense of responsibility for the fate of the Imperium and his fallen brothers. However, Dorn's sorrow was compounded when Robert Culliman, now the Imperial Regent and Lord Commander of the Imperium, proposed the Codex Astartes, a set of rules that would break the Space Marine Legions into smaller chapters of 1000 warriors. Dorn initially reacted with outrage. He felt betrayed, believing that the Imperium blamed him for the fall of his brother Primarchs. The prospect of dismantling his legion, which he saw as a brotherhood forced through blood and sacrifice, was deeply painful to him. The Imperial Feasts were more than just a military unit, they were his family and he believed splitting them was another failure on his part. Despite his initial resistance, Dorn realized that resisting the Codex Astartes could lead to another civil war something the Imperium could not afford. Though it pained him, he eventually relented, agreeing to the second founding. However, this was one of the darkest periods in Dorn's life. The Imperial Feast, like their Primarch, hovered on the brink of despair, unsure of their true future in a rapidly changing Imperium. In this time of turmoil, Dorn sought clarity and redemption through the use of the Pain Glove a device that inflicted extreme pain, allowing its user to meditate and reflect on their inner struggles. Through this self-inflicted torment, Dorn experienced a vision of the Emperor. He came to believe that the Emperor was still watching over them, not dead, but alive within the Golden Throne. This revelation reignited Dorn's sense of purpose. He decreed that the Imperial Feast would undergo a symbolic rebirth, much like the pain and transformation he experienced in the Pain Glove. This transformation took shape through the infamous battle known as the Iron Cage. The Iron Warriors, led by their demon Primarch Perturabo, had constructed a massive fortress on the world of Sebastus IV, daring the Imperial Feast to assault it. The fortress was a trap designed to mock the Imperial Feast and showcase the Iron Warriors' mastery of siege warfare, but Dorn, driven by a need to redeem his legion and purge it of those who could resist the Cordex Astartes, accepted the challenge. The assault on the Eternal Fortress became one of the most brutal and tragic battles in Imperial history. Dorn led his warriors in a relentless all-out attack, without the usual careful planning that characterized his campaigns. The battle was a nightmare of trenches, ambushes and brutal hand-to-hand -hand combat. The Imperial Feast fought with grim determination, enduring unimaginable suffering. Brother fought brother in desperate struggles, and many of Dorn's most zealous warriors found the honorable death they sought. Despite their best efforts, the Imperial Feast were on the verge of being annihilated. 
it was only the intervention of Robot Gilliman and the Ultramarines that saved them from the complete destruction. Gilliman, seeing the futility of the bloodshed, extracted the battered Imperial Fist from the battlefield and allowed the Iron Warriors to escape. The Iron Cage was a turning point for the Imperial Fist, the battle had caused them dearly, but it also served as the crucible in which they were metaphorically reborn. Following the battle, the Legion was divided into chapters in accordance with the Codex Astartes. Under Dawn's guidance, the Imperial Fist embraced the Codex and spent two decades reorganizing themselves. By the time they re-emerged, their adherence to the Codex was second only to the Ultramarines. Dawn's life after the Iron Cage was marked by sorrow as he witnessed the deaths or disappearances of his fellow Primarchs. He spoke out against the growing trend of viewing the Primarchs as demigods, insisting that only the Emperor was worthy of such reverence. To him, each Primarch had failed the Emperor in some way, including himself. In 781 Millennium 31st, during the First Black Crusade, Dorn met his end while resisting a chaos invasion led by Abaddon the Despoiler. Dorn and three companions of the Imperial Feast launched a series of daring boarding actions against the Chaos fleet, crippling several warships. However, during a final assault on the bridge of the Sword of Sacrilege, a Chaos battleship, Dorn was killed in battle. His body was never recovered, save for his skeletal left hand, which was retrieved by the Imperial Feast and preserved as a holy relic within their fortress monastery, the Phalanx. Dorn's fate remains shrouded in mystery. While many believe he fell during the First Black Crusade, there are hints that he may have survived, as suggested by the words of Vulcan during the War of the Beast. Nevertheless, Dorn's legacy endures through his chapter, who continued to draw inspiration from his example and his unwavering commitment to the Emperor. That wraps up our journey through the life and legacy of Rogal Dorn lore lovers. If you enjoyed this exploration of one of the Emperor's finest, make sure to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more Warhammer 40k lore content. And if you want to keep the discussion going or suggest topics for future videos, join our growing community on Discord, the link is in the description below. Thanks for watching and as always, stay vigilant, stay loyal and I'll see you in the next one.